And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Don. <laughs> Glory to your name, Lord God. Praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> hey, we're going on a journey this morning. Glory to God. It's about where our mindset is. It's about where our mindset is. I'm a wiggle worm this morning, and I'm excited. I'm excited about what God's doing in our lives, the revival that he's bringing in our lives. But we have to set our minds <laughs> to seeking God, to walking in faith, to, to not, not living on the edge of faith, but living in faith. If we live in the edge of faith, then we're on the fence. We're straddling one or the other. We become lukewarm. Oh, praise the Lord. My definition this morning is a mindset, a mental attitude or inclination, a fixed state of mind. <laughs> okay, so now that we got that... <laughs> definition out of the way we can we can contrast a couple things unbelief and faith and, and we can see what happens when when unbelief when the Lord wants to move on us we have to be in faith we can't just just pick and choose when we want to have faith we got to walk in faith all the time but if we choose not to have faith because it's a choice we make we make a choice I can share a story From the 1980s, I was going to church at that time, and I really went back to church for the wrong reasons. I went with the idea that it would make a deal with God, and uh, oh, without going into too much detail, when we go in and we try to make a deal with God, we're not going in faith. We want to get what we want, and I wanted something back that 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 I felt that shouldn't have been taken from me, shouldn't have been gone from me, but at any rate, that was gone. And when I figured out that I wasn't going to get what I wanted back, I started getting disappointed because I thought, you know, if I make this deal with God and go to church and be a good church boy, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get what I want. And things don't always work that way, as we know. And so anyway, in that disappointment, I made a choice not to believe not to believe. I chose that. That was my choice. Not to believe. To be, begin to walk in unbelief. I, I began to do sinful things again. I began to fall back into them sinful ways. And, and I started making bad choices for myself. And there came a point where a, a, I don't know who it was. He came into the church and he's famous. I don't, but I don't remember who he is. And, uh, you know, wonders were going on. Signs and wonders were going on that night. And uh, I chose not to believe. And I said, I don't believe this guy. I think he's just a charlatan. And that was really my, my exit point right there. My friends tried to get me to go up there, and I refused. I said, no, I don't want to go up there. I don't believe. And I chose not to believe. Nothing happened for me. <laughs> no, I, I shouldn't say nothing happened for me. Something happened for me. A dynamic changed in me to the point where I left the church. Where I left that, that body. When I should have been seeking help. But at the time, I didn't, I didn't know about all of this. I didn't realize I was making a deal with God. I didn't know this until years later. Then I realized, you know, I was trying to make a deal with God. That's why two years ago... When I was in jail, I didn't want to have anything to do with God because I figured I'd be making a deal with Him. And I would just backslide anyway. And every time you backslide, it's worse than... You know, it's, it's harder on you. You, you. you sink deeper in the mud. And so anyway, because of my unbelief, I left. And in Matthew 13, 54-58, it says, And coming into his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they, they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom? These mighty works. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? 
and are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do mighty works there because of their unbelief. Did you catch the first thing? <laughs> they were astonished. Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? They knew Jesus. <laughs> they knew his family was part it was part of their crew, part of their group, part of their tribe. They knew him. They didn't know him as as, as the Savior, but he started doing things around them and their unbelief tied his hands. It stopped him. Dead in his tracks. It's like me back in the 1980s. Because I chose to unbelieve. I chose, uh, because I chose unbelief. Jesus couldn't do anything with me. God will not move. It's impossible to please God. God will not move against our own free will. When we stand in unbelief of things, God can't move. He can, he, can, he can go around the perimeter of that force field you put up around yourself and knock and look for a weak spot. He can send circumstances your way to wake you up to the realities of what's going on, like he did with me. He called me many times after that. Many times. And I would always refute him, rebuff him, just go, God. I don't want anything to do with you. I can't make a deal with you because I can't walk in this. Because I knew for sure, because of my unbelief, that I wouldn't last. And, and I never thought to myself that if, if I set my mind to this, I can do it. It was always, I'm not going to be able to live up to it. I don't believe. I don't believe what you can do. I don't believe. And even though I believed in God, the devil believes in God. <laughs> Demons shudder. <laughs> I was too foolish <laughs> to realize I should be in, in fear. You no, know, God could have struck me down at any time, but God's great love reached through space and time because He knew He had a purpose for me. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And he, and he always had that. He never got discouraged. God doesn't get discouraged with it. But I wasn't pleasing to him. But he had a plan for me. He had a purpose for me. So he kept knocking until he knocked <laughs> some sense into me. And praise the Lord. Uh, bless his holy name. But we can see there that because of their unbelief, he couldn't do anything. His hands were tied. He didn't do many things there. But there were believers there because it says he did not do many mighty works there. He did a little mighty works there. You know, nobody knows. He might have set, he might have set free a hundred people. He might have sozoed a thousand people there. I don't know how big his village was. It might have been 25 people. It might have been just his family in that village. You know, we don't know for sure. All, all we got is some, well, never mind. <laughs> At any rate, uh, if our unbelief ties, our, tie, ties his hands from doing anything in our lives, what happens when we begin to step out in faith? What happens when we begin to step out in faith? What happens to this blog when I step out in faith and allow the Holy Spirit to do His thing? People get touched. Maybe not a lot of people, but some people do get touched. And uh, in Luke 5, 4 through 9, it says, And when He had finished speaking, He said to Simon, Put out into the deep, and let your nets down for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish. 
and their nets were breaking, they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats. So they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. If God gives you a word, act on it. Even if you've been attempting in your own flesh to do something, when Jesus speaks and, and, and you get frustrated and you give up and, um, and, and you begin to pull in your net, Hear what Jesus says. Drop the net there and fish. Peter says, well, we've been doing it all night and we haven't caught a thing. But okay, since you told me, I'll do it. He was obedient to what Jesus said. When we're obedient to what Jesus says and where he leads us, guess what? We get a, we get a catch. we and it was such an abundance, such an abundance, that it took two boats to pull all the fish in. Now in our lives, how does that relate to our lives, you might ask? How it relates to our lives is the fact that being obedient to the Word of Jesus, even in the face of, I know nothing's going to happen, but I'm going to listen to you anyway. Even in the face of, I've been doing this and nothing's happened. It's, it's kind of like this, this video blog, my written blog. I don't really see much going on with it. A lot of times it's in my own flesh. But this time I believe it's in the Lord. The Lord says, drop the net. If, if we step out in faith and drop the net, we're going to see results far beyond our wildest expectations or hopes. But it's up to us to decide what we're going to choose. Are we going to choose to believe even in the face of doubt? Like the few people that actually had a miracle in their lives. Like Peter who had a miracle in his lives and the other saw it. Peter wanted him to go away because he knew he was a sinful man. He saw what his God could do through faith. He was astonished. They were all astonished. Wow, look at all these fish. You know, and the few people that got healed in his village, they were stepping out in faith. You would have thought their testimony alone would have been enough. But Jesus says, I don't need man's testimony. <laughs> There's others that testify against, or about me, not against me, that testify for me that you can't see. My Father, the Spirit of God, they testify for me. And I just want to say thank you for coming to this blog this morning. I just want to bless your day. I just thank you, Father, for my brothers and sisters. I said you just bless them today and just <laughs> speak life into this word, Lord. It's your word. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me go get my other chair. <laughs> you get to go on my journey. You get to go on my walk with me. I'm new at these things. I'm new at these things. And God wants to take us into a different direction. And sometimes we just have to step out in faith and do those new things. Do those new things. And I learned a new chord yesterday, so i got to try and remember it. It'll just take me a second here to get my fingers on the right key. I gotta get my fingers stretched. 
That is a give a CG. <laughs> now my teacher Mark wants me to know which keys I'm in, so and I agree with him that I should know these things. My fingers aren't warmed up. One day I'll get smooth and But I wanna play from my heart just for the Lord. And in the key of C, do an E minor. Do an A minor. <laughs> Is it alright if I not perfect in what I do. Something sounds out of key. Oh, there we go. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. One of these days I'll get this right. Your prayers, my brothers, sisters. But right now, I want to exhort you get along with the Lord, have a, a mindset change, let Him speak life into you, become pleasing to the Father. And without faith, it is impossible to please. We have to have faith, and, and I sometimes, you know, every man's been given a measure of faith. But sometimes we have to practice stretching that faith, and that's up on us. That's up on us. That's choices we make, like me back in the 1980s, and in the 21st century, I made another choice, and I made a good choice. In 2011, I made a good choice, and I'm, I'm just so happy that I made that choice, and I'm not miserable, and begin to thank Him and praise Him. I know I say I always say praise and thanks, but I thought I'd switch it around. Praise and thank Him. Thank Him and praise Him, and step out in perfect faith. <laughs> and worship Him. Do what He wants you to do. And that's what's pleasing to Him, is when we do what He wants us to do. And do something new today. Don't do the same thing day after day. Step out of the box. Step out of the box. Do something new. Even if, even if you aren't good at it, practice. John, and John in the epistle of John, one of them says to practice righteousness. Don't practice sin. We had our whole lives to practice sin. Let's practice righteousness. Pick up an instrument and begin to play and play to the Lord. believe in faith that all the things that you do will spice up your life and bring life to others. Don't be religious. Don't be stuck in a box. Learn something new. Read a book. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart, do. Put that net down in the water. Even when it looks like there's nothing there, just do it. Go out and throw a hook in and catch a fish with two coins in its mouth. Do the impossible. 
like me, learn how to play the guitar, or do a blog, or, or write a blog, or stand up and teach, which you always hate anybody to see you do anything. I always lived my life undercover because I was ashamed of who I am, but God's always been proud of me. He's always proud of you. He loves you guys. He loves me. Let's just step out in faith today. Let's put aside our doubts and watch Jesus do mighty miracles. And let's watch him perform mighty works in us. Mighty works! I declare that over you. Once I start picking it up, it's hard for me to, to lose it. But I just want to send you on your way today. Know that you're awesome. Know that. Jesus calls you awesome. He says he loves you. He doesn't hold anything against you. He sets you free. The, <laughs> the door on the cell is open. Step out. Well, I'll see you. Bye.